Switching to Geico is a good idea, especially when you consider everything. First off, Geico makes it easy to switch. They have licensed agents available 24-7 online or over the phone. But if it's so easy, you might start thinking everything is easy, even big wave surfing. And it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Well, if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds on car insurance. And you could keep saving by bundling your motorcycle, boat, and RV, plus your home or renter's insurance. But saving money might lead you to make some questionable purchases, like a 20-foot feather boa. And do you know how hard it is to clean a 20-foot feather boa? Well, they do have an industry-leading mobile app you can use to pay your bill, file and manage a claim, or add a new driver. But when life gets a little easier, it makes you too confident. And you start calling everyone ace. And you're better than that. Well, Geico has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and has been saving people money for 85 years. It's hard to beat that. But you're right. Switch to Geico. It's obviously a good idea. Welcome to You News, the podcast using the power of Univision to bring the news that matters to you in English. Today is Wednesday, July 14th. I'm Lorraine Cáceres. These are today's headlines. Major protests here in the United States as Cuban Americans show support for those taking to the streets across the island nation, even as calls grow for a stronger White House response. Growing concerns about the Delta variant and its impact on unvaccinated populations here in the U.S., several states seeing a disturbing rise in infections and hospital visits. And the death toll from a massive condo collapse near Miami, now at least 95, as recovery efforts begin to wrap up. This and much more today on U News. We begin with the latest in Cuba. Information for protesters um, across the island of 11 million slowly trickling in because the government efforts to clamp down on communications. So far, the regime reporting one person has died. This as protests grow here in the U.S. in support of those fighting for their freedom 90 miles away from Florida. Situation in Cuba are hard to come by due to limited internet access. But this was the scene on Monday in the suburb of La Guinera. Police tired of throwing rocks and they started shooting with their guns. They took out their guns and started shooting. There are some injured and one dead as well. On Tuesday, there was an eerie calm in Havana, the government claiming to have regained control of the streets. This video now going viral, popular Cuban YouTuber Dina Stars speaking live on Todo es Mentira, a Spanish television news show on Tuesday when government security forces showed up at her door and detained her. I make the Cuban government responsible of anything that happens to me. Meanwhile, in the U.S., thousands taking to the streets across the country showing support for Cubans on the island. This scene unfolding Tuesday night in Las Vegas, Nevada. In Miami, protesters caused traffic chaos blocking a major highway. People passionately chanting, if Cuba is in the street, Miami is too. Police convincing the crowd to move after many hours of negotiating. It doesn't matter whether you're born in Cuba, Cuban born or U.S. born. If you're Cuban heritage and you love Cubans, because I know a lot of Colombians, Venezuela, and a lot of people that love Cuba, you got to understand what's going on and you have to support this. We are lucky to be able to do this here. The governor of Florida held a roundtable discussion Tuesday with Cuban leaders in Miami. If you go into it thinking that they're upset about a vaccine shortage or they're upset that there's not enough groceries in the store, uh, but they just want uh, the regime to change a few things around and kind of rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic, if that's what you think, then you clearly have no hope of of getting a a favorable outcome here. He's calling on the Biden administration to, quote, take a strong stance against the oppressive communist regime. The State Department is urging the regime to stop the Internet blackout imposed when the protest on the island started. Uh, Shutting down uh, technology, shutting down uh, information pathways, uh, that does nothing to address the legitimate uh, needs and aspirations uh, of uh, the Cuban people. Meanwhile, the Department of Homeland Security warning Cubans on the island not to come to the U.S. The Coast Guard, along with our state, local and federal partners, are monitoring any activity that may indicate increases in unsafe and irregular maritime migration in the Florida Straits, including unpermitted vessel departures from Florida to Cuba. The time is never right to attempt migration 
by sea. To those who risk their lives doing so, this risk is not worth taking. Allow me to be clear. If you take to the sea, you will not come to the United States. It is not clear yet where YouTuber Dina Stars was taken and if she is still in custody. And now to Capitol Hill, where Senate Democrats have reached an agreement on a $3.5 trillion budget plan that would expand Medicare, fund climate change initiatives, and fulfill other parts of President Biden's economic agenda. Edwin PT has the details from Washington, D.C. Edwin? Speak President Biden is making his way to Capitol Hill to have lunch with a group of senators and discuss the plan. This $3.5 trillion reconciliation package would expand Medicare benefits, boost federal safety net programs, and combat climate change. If approved, it would represent a historic burst of federal spending. This proposal is separate from the $600 billion bipartisan bill to improve roads and bridges around the country, bill that is still in the works. This resolution could set the stage for Democrats to pass reform. We're talking about making permanent the tax shell credit, paid medical and family leave, and even immigration. Democrats are celebrating their deal because by expanding Medicare, it would add coverage for hearing, dental, and vision, and all of that while putting money into research and development. Take a listen. We are very proud of this plan. We know we have a long road to go. We're going to get this done for the sake of making average Americans' lives a whole lot better. Schumer added that every major program proposed by President Biden is funded in a robust way. This could start a new debate because the Democratic agreement includes changes to the U.S. tax code that would raise the corporation tax rate to fund the bill. Once Biden is done at the launch on Capitol Hill, he'll go back to the White House to meet with a group of governors and majors to discuss the infrastructure bill, especially the importance of the critical investment in the bipartisan framework to states and cities across the country. Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretaries of Labor and Commerce will attend the meeting. We are reporting live in Washington, D.C. Back to you, Lorraine. Thank you, Edwin, for that report. And another major story we are tra tracking, Revel, the ransom gang that attacked a meat supplier JBS Foods this spring and a major IT software vendor this month, has mysteriously vanished from the Internet. According to cybersecurity experts tracking the group, websites and other infrastructures belonging to the criminal uh, cyber criminal gang, which is believed to operate from Eastern Europe or Russia, went dark on Tuesday. The reasons for, the, for Revel's disappearance were not immediately clear, but it follows a raft of high-profile hackings by the group that seized control of computers around the world. It also comes after President Joe Biden said he warned his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, there would be consequences if Moscow failed to address the ransomware attacks coming from within its borders. And just days after the assassination of the country's president, Haitian police are looking for 10 local, new local suspects in relation to the assassination of Jovenel Moise. The new suspects are being described as armed and dangerous. Haiti's communications secretary also confirmed that there are three wanted in connection with the investigation into the assassination. 39 people have been named so far, including at least 26 Colombians and at least three U.S. U.S. citizens. And now to the aftermath of the tragedy in Surfside, Florida. Exhausted crews are on day 21 and nearing the end of their search for victims as the site of the Champlain Tower South collapse. The death toll stands at 95. The county's medical examiner's office said every individual that was found in the building collapse will have the same cause of death, blunt force injuries due to the building's collapse. 14 people remain unaccounted for, which includes 10 victims whose bodies have been recovered but not yet identified, leaving potentially four more victims to be found. And everyone who lost a family member in the Champlain Towers South building collapse is mourning, but one man's grief is amplified even more. Marcelo Catarossi says he lost five members of his family in the Surfside disaster. Among them are his 89 and 85-year-old parents, 
two sisters, and a seven-year-old niece. Catarrosi says his parents met in New York in the 1950s when his mother was a diplomat for Uruguay at the United Nations, and his father was a civil engineer who had immigrated from Argentina. After moving to Miami in, 19, in the 1980s, they bought an Art Deco hotel and renovated it. It is now part of the Blue Moon Hotel and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. One of his sisters was an architect visiting from Argentina, and the other was a professional photographer. And a major airline is stepping up to help families of the victims in the Surfside, Florida condo collapse. American Airlines is donating 3 million miles to United Way of Miami-Dade to transport families to and from the South Florida city. According to the airline, if requested by families, they are also offering to fly the remains of those who died back to their hometowns. Months of progress now being reversed as COVID cases are rising steadily, especially in parts of the country with low vaccination rates. Still, one state has decided to stop vaccine out outreach programs. One official says she was even fired for promoting vaccines. Ana Mendoza has the details. This morning, COVID cases across the country have doubled in just the last three weeks. 28 states are now reporting at least a 10% jump in infections in recent days, fueled by the more contagious Delta variant. In Mississippi, seven children are now in the ICU with COVID. Two are on ventilators. These high viral loads, combined with low vaccination rates, are creating a potentially very dangerous situation for our state. Arkansas. One of the 30 states with less than half of its residents fully vaccinated has seen hospital admissions spike 54 percent in two weeks. You can't ignore the fact that Arkansas has a, a low vaccination rate compared to, to other states. All of our ICUs and our medical beds, surgical beds are completely full. Cheryl Tucker was just released from the hospital after surviving her second bout of COVID. Will you get vaccinated now? I'm, I'm not going to say 100 percent, but I'm thinking about it. In neighboring Tennessee, the state's top vaccine official says she was fired for trying to spread information about the shot. The state is reportedly stopping all adolescent vaccine outreach programs. Politics have been put ahead of the welfare of the people of Tennessee and the children of Tennessee, and those people are going to suffer. But an official with Tennessee's Department of Health says certain vaccine outreach tactics have hurt progress. Meanwhile, there's growing concern in popular tourist destinations like Cape Cod, which are seeing so-called breakthrough cases of COVID. Those are infections among people fully vaccinated. Doctors say breakthrough cases are rare and the vaccines are still highly affected at preventing serious illness. Ana de Mendoza, U News. In other coronavirus news, the U.S. Supreme Court will not take up a long-shot bid to overturn the public travel mask mandate. A man in Florida had challenged the Biden administration's order, saying his anxiety disorder prevents him from wearing a mask, so he hasn't been able to fly. Justice Clarence Thomas oversees potential cases out of appeals court in Florida. He's denying their request for the high court to take up that case. And now to New York, where pandemic assistance intended for all residents, regardless of immigration status, is continuing to roll out. Fabiola Galindo has more from The Big Apple. Daisy Silva counts the months since she was laid off from her job due to the pandemic. Undocumented New Yorkers like her, who did not receive federal unemployment benefits, are eligible to apply for state aid instead, but they are encountering a major hurdle. We are limited because we don't have any kind of documents, says another eligible worker. But now the city of New York will prioritize these workers when they apply for a municipal ID, also known as NYC ID. IDNYC will actually allow them uh, to be able to apply uh, for this fund, utilizing it as one of the uh, one of the documentation in order to prove who they are, to prove where they live. They also need to show proof that they lived in New York before March of 2020 and that their loss of income is due to the pandemic, using either an IT number or a letter from their former employer. 
El Departamento de Trabajo ha dicho que no va a... The Department of Labor has been clear that there won't be any negative consequences for employers who hire undocumented workers. That information will not be shared, says this activist, since the only purpose is to give relief to a worker. With that money, Daisy says she could reinvent herself. There is no deadline to request the aid, but applications will be accepted only until the funds dry out. In Queens, New York, Fabiola Galindo, U News. And when it comes to vaccines, the Defense Department says roughly 70% of the U.S. military has had at least one dose of the COVID-19 shot. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby spoke about the update with reporters. While saying the figure is encouraging, Kirby also noted that there's more work to be done. He said the military is still committed to encouraging troops to get vaccinated to, quote, the maximum degree. And the Department of Homeland Security is now giving COVID-19 vaccinations to immigrant detainees. Tuesday, Immigration and Customs Enforcement said it is ramping up vaccinations at detention facilities. The agency says Homeland Security received an initial allocation of 10,000 Johnson & Johnson vaccine doses and nationwide distribution is underway. ICE detention facilities have been dealing with a growing number of positive cases throughout the pandemic with nearly 20,000 confirmed cases and nine deaths. And in other immigration news, the Biden administration is assigning more officials to review applications for Do the DACA program, which protects thousands of young dreamers from deportation. Jenny Aponte explains why there is a backlog and what authorities are doing to speed up the process. And I'm sure... The Biden administration is evaluating additional strategies to reduce the backlog in the processing of DACA applications. By the end of June, more than 99,000 new applications and renewals were reported to be pending. Mi hermano y yo los dos contribu contribuimos financieramente en la casa. My brother and I, we both contribute financially in the house. They are taking a long time, and my concern is losing my job for not having a work permit. Miriam Ochoa needs to renew before her work permit expires. After three years, the federal government began receiving new applications in December 2020, and the pandemic caused disruptions in biometric services. But some immigration attorneys say it is time for the agency to speed up its processing. Definitivamente, contratar más empleados, entrenarlos correctamente, y siempre ellos dicen que les Definitely to hire more employees, train them properly. They always say they lack money, but each DACA applicant pays $500 or so. Since March 2021, there has been a 48% increase in applications, with 81,000 new applications pending in June. A spokeswoman for the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services said that there is no backlog for processing initial and renewal DACA applications. She added that the renewals are within normal processing times. Reported by Dulce Castellanos, this is Gianni Aponte for U News. In legal news, a federal appeals court has ruled that residents here in the U.S. can legally have access to handguns before they're old enough to drink alcohol. A three-judge panel of the Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals says placing a minimum age of 21 years old to buy weapons from licensed dealers violates the Second Amendment. The majority opinion, written by Judge Julius Richardson, says 18 to 20-year-olds have Second Amendment rights. Richardson stands was backed by Judge Stephen Agee. Both Richardson and Agee were appointed by Republican presidents. And abortion rights groups have filed a lawsuit to block a Texas law allowing citizens to enforce the state's so-called heartbeat ban. Part of the ban would allow private citizens to sue individuals thought to have assisted in violating the law. Tuesday's lawsuit targets the provision that gives individuals a monetary incentive to enforce the law. In some cases, citizens could get up to $10,000. Plaintiffs say the law, quote, places a bounty on people who provide or aid abortions, inviting random strangers to sue them. The lawsuit is the latest abortion-related challenge to come before a federal court in recent months. More of you news after this short break.
Imagine a daily newscast that speaks to you about your world in plain English. Each weekday, we partner with Hispanic America's most trusted news source to bring you the stories from home and abroad that matter to you. They don't know when they're going to be able to go back to work. Victims also from Mexico and this mass shooting. Officials in and out of the residence. We're going to continue fighting. Your news covers the news of your world and makes it easy to understand. Your news, your world, your news on Fusion. Welcome back to You News. Some shoppers say manufacturers are putting less product in their packages, but keeping prices the same. This is what this is what's known as shrinkflation. And here to talk about this consumer watchdog, Edward Dworsky. He's the founder of consumerworld.org. Thanks for being here, Edward. Well, thank you. So what is shrinkflation or downsizing, as you prefer to call it? Well, downsizing is when a manufacturer decides he wants to raise the price, but he wants to do it in a sneaky way. So instead of raising the price directly, he does it indirectly. He makes the product a little bit smaller. So that way you're paying the same price, but getting less for your money. What are some examples of products that are becoming smaller now? Well, some of the items I've shown on my website, mouseprint.org, is where I showcase these things periodically. Doritos, for example, recently went from nine and three quarter ounces in the bag, lost half an ounce and went down to nine and one quarter ounces. Wheat thins always used to come in one pound packages. That's 16 ounces. And lo and behold, a reader wrote in and said, look, they're now 14 ounces. So you lost more than 10% of the amount of contents in that product. Costco's own brand of paper towels also downsized. Their big eight roll pack used to have 160 sheets on a roll and it went down to 140 sheets on a roll. But think about it. If you lose 20 sheets each on eight rolls, you've lost a whole roll. So even though you're buying eight rolls, you're getting the equivalent of only seven. My mind is blown. <laughs> what are the reasons that manufacturers give you for downsizing a product? Well, they basically say they're facing inflationary pressures themselves, that the cost of raw materials may have gone up. Like recently, the paper manufacturers said that wood pulp prices had risen, so they had to raise prices on paper goods like paper towels and toilet paper at the end of June, or they say the cost of gasoline has gone up. So getting products to the store actually costs them more, and they want to pass on those increased charges to the ultimate customer. You're giving us incredible, incredible information here. So what can consumers do about shrinkflation? Well, you have to become net weight conscious. That means look at the products you normally buy, note what the net weight is or the net contents. How many sheets are on the paper roll and paper towels that you buy all the time? How many ounces in your orange juice container? And next time you go to buy them, make sure it still has the same number. I know it's a pain to do that, but that's the real way to protect yourselves. One additional thing you can do if your favorite brand is down sized, look for a competitor. Maybe another name brand hasn't followed the trend yet. And certainly look at the store brand. The store brands are usually the last to downsize. So you'll be able to get a larger size for less money that way. And Edgar, you had great examples with Kirkland and um, Doritos. But let's talk about one of my favorites, Briars. I understand you have a little bit of a comparison there to show us. Yeah, here, here is the history of Breyer's ice cream. That's incredible. Over the last 20 years. They started out at 64 ounces, that's half a gallon. Then they took out a cup, it went down to 56 ounces, and the current Breyer's is even less, 48 ounces. You lost another cup. Now, you don't usually get to see the the old and the new product side by side, because most of the time you just see the one item, so you may not in fact catch the fact that it's gotten smaller, but that, they have. That is incredible. Thank you so much, Edward Dworsky, founder of consumerworld.org for those helpful tips. And for more than ever, it's important to pay attention when, uh, when you're out shopping. Thank you for the insight. Thanks, Lorraine.
Thanks for listening to You News, the podcast. Don't forget to follow You News on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you haven't yet, go to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe, rate, and review. Join us tomorrow for a new episode. Until then. Switching to GEICO is a good idea, especially when you consider everything. First off, GEICO makes it easy to switch. They have licensed agents available 24-7 online or over the phone. But if it's so easy, you might start thinking everything is easy, even big wave surfing. And it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Well, if you switch to GEICO, you could save hundreds on car insurance. And you could keep saving by bundling your motorcycle, boat, and RV, plus your home or renter's insurance. But saving money might lead you to make some questionable purchases, like a 20-foot feather boa. And do you know how hard it is to clean a 20-foot feather boa? Well, they do have an industry-leading mobile app you can use to pay your bill, file and manage a claim, or add a new driver. But when life gets a little easier, it makes you too confident. And you start calling everyone ace. And you're better than that. Well, GEICO has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and has been saving people money for 85 years. It's hard to beat that. But you're right. Switch to GEICO. It's obviously a good idea.